We have a relatively short lesson today, again looking at outliers, but this time with a focus on scatter plots. Remember that when we start to consider the influence of outliers, we're in step six in our data cycle, which is interpreting. So we want to figure out what influence these outliers are having on the rest of our analysis. So remember in grade nine, we learned about scatter plots. So what is a scatter plot? A scatter plot is a type of graph where we actually show two different types of data sets. So in this case, I'm looking at infant mass versus age. So I've got the age of the baby on the x-axis, and I've got its mass on the y-axis. These are actually two different data sets that I'm showing on the same graph. And we use a scatter plot to figure out if there's a relationship between these two data sets. Whenever we have two data sets about the same thing, so in this case, each baby has an age and a mass, all right? We call that bivariate data. And you're gonna learn more about this in grade 12. We're just doing a little bit of a primer now. So in this case, here's the bivariate data for this table. So the first baby has an age and a mass, the second baby and the third baby, etc. Okay, so each of these points on our scatter plot represents one of these babies. That's what we mean by bivariate data. Each measurement, let's say, has two different data values associated with it. Each pair of these values is plotted on the graph as a coordinate. So remember your coordinate form, x first and then y. The x-axis is where we put the independent variable. So hopefully you've learned about your variables before. The independent variable is typically the one we have more control over, okay? On the y-axis, we put the dependent variable. So that's the variable that we wanna see if there's an effect from the one on the x-axis, from the independent variable. So I wanna see what the effect on mass is based on the age of the baby, okay? If a relationship exists, we say that these two data sets are correlated. So there's a relationship between them. So in this example, we can see that the points are roughly increasing in a straight line. So we say that they have a linear relationship. We know that the word linear means straight line. But you can also get some cool other shapes. So you get Quadratic relationships, remember that quadratic equations form parabolas, or the U shape. So we get happy faces and sad faces. You can get that in a scatter plot as well. Or you could have exponential relationships. So you get increasing exponential relationships, like in this graph. Or you could have decreasing exponential relationships. But fortunately, and this is true in real life as well, most of the relationships you'll encounter are going to be the linear ones. Most of the relationships are gonna be the straight line ones. So within these linear relationships, we get a few different types of correlations. So sometimes we call these trends or patterns in the data. So let's look at the first one. The first one, it's called a positive correlation. So if the line is roughly increasing, that means that as x increases, the y values also increase. That's a positive correlation. If the line goes down, that means we have a negative correlation. So as the x values increase, the y values are decreasing. And then if there's no relationship at all, you can't see any sort of line or pattern we say that there's no correlation in the data. There's no relationship between X and Y. So let's see how all of this plays out in an example. Back to our good old example, where we have speeding motorists going past the school gate very fast, or in some cases, very slowly. Here's one of the speed demons. Okay, so now let's say in addition to the speed, we also know the age of each motorist, okay? So suddenly, instead of univariate data, where we only have one piece of information on each motorist, we now have bivariate data, which we have 
two pieces of information about each motorist. Okay, so let's draw these on our scatter plot. The hardest thing about drawing a scatter plot is figuring out which variable goes on which axis. So I've put age on the x-axis as my independent variable, and I've put speed as my dependent variable on the y-axis. So I like to think of it as whatever variable I'm interested in, I care more about the speed than I do about the age, right? Because speed is something that I can try to fix. Okay, so I like to put that on my y-axis, remember, x-axis is independent, y-axis is dependent. So let's start to plot these coordinates. Our first coordinate is x equals 40, y equals 60. So that goes on my graph. Next coordinate, 75, 65. And we can carry on plotting each of these coordinates. And I get a scatter plot that looks like this. From my scatter plot, I now need to identify outliers. Before I can identify outliers, I need to first figure out the shape of the graph. So is it linear, quadratic, or exponential? Okay, looking at the shape of this graph, I can see that most of the data lies in roughly straight line. So this is a linear pattern. Once I've identified that it's linear, I'm going to look and see is there anything that lies far away from my roughly straight line. And I can see that there is one coordinate that lies far away. So that's an extreme value, that's my outlier. Okay, and the only thing I need to do now I've identified it, all I need to do is give my answer in coordinate form. And sometimes you have to go back to the data table for this to get the values exactly right. But I remember that this is 75, 65. So there's some speed demon 75 year old who's going 65 past the school gate. But most of the older people are going slower than that. Okay. The only other thing that you need to know how to do in terms of scatter plots is how to draw a line of best fit. Okay. So the first thing we need to do if we haven't already is to figure out the shape of the graph. But in this case, we've already talked about that. So we know that this is going to be a straight line. And literally in grade 11, all you're going to do is do it by eye, meaning you're just going to roughly draw so that the same number of points is above and below the line. And the points are allowed to touch the line as well. Okay. You're going to, before you draw your line, you're going to exclude the outliers. So I'm not going to include this coordinate when I draw my line. So doing this by eye, I'm going to put my line roughly there. I can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six points above. And below the line, I have one, two, three, four, five, six below. So I have an equal number above and below the line. I've excluded my outlier from that count. Because we're doing this by eye, your line might be slightly different to mine, but it should be pretty close. Okay. And the value of this line is that I can now do what we call interpolate. So I can look at the line and predict what someone else might do. So for example, if somebody who's 70 is driving past, they might drive fast at a speed of, let's call that 27 kilometers per hour. So I've interpolated, meaning I've used the line to make a prediction. Okay, you'll learn a lot more next year about lines of best fit and how to do it more accurately. But for now, we're happy for you to just do it by hand or by eye. That's it. For homework, you're going to do three problems, exercise four, A, B, and C, and this is on page 334.